Tremor, population 6,101. It was the off-season and the local youngsters were up to no good in Tip Phelan's caravan park. He wasn't about to begrudge them a few flagons in the dunes until he got a phone call from the guard the sergeant telling him a bad element was hanging around. Would you consider installing security cameras or a couple of alsations? That was the way with the guards. They'd make a suggestion and if you ignored it, you'd be done for tax or speeding or any else shite. The call would have to be acted on. But you were only caught in trouble with dogs and cameras, so Tip put a small ad in the Irish Independent instead. Wanted, caretaker to live rent-free by the sea. He was known as Tipperary because the only song he ever sang was Shlieve Naman. In the back room of the Grand on a Saturday night, nobody would deny he had a voice. There was a want in it that could only be understood by men since it afflicted them alone. An unassailable scourge for which there was no end or cure. Whenever he cleared his throat to sing, a shut up to fuck swept over the bar, hush, 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 all the way down to the lounge. Tip closed his eyes tight against the silence and he began. Alone, all alone by the wave-washed strand, and alone in a crowded hall. The hall it is gay and the waves there are grand, but my heart is not here at all. His real name was Michael Phelan, but nobody in Tremor apart from his wife Verona knew it. She called him Tip anyway, and he called her V, or VP, when they were alone and she gave him the look, knowing it would drive him demented. They could be at it half the night, and often they were. The next day he'd be addled with desire and a profound ache in his bones. Early on in the marriage, when he was still hurling, he'd sleep out of temptation's way in the spare room, a measure he was forced to take after a bionic all-nighter left him in ribbons for the county final. The sentiment on the sideline was that he'd been brutal and they took him off at half-time. But the match was beyond salvation. Oh, v was lethal all right, at least she had been, before the twins came along. These days, she was indifferent to him. It was like living with a cat. When she wasn't changing the babies, she was nursing them, one on each nipple, their little fat legs kneading her stomach like it was dough. She was exhausted, destroyed. He begged her to patch things up with her mother for the love of God. Verona bundled her breasts back into the sling she'd taken to wearing in place of a bra and zipped her fleece up to the chin. Hell will freeze over, she said, before I talk to that bitch again. Twenty-two people applied for the caretaker job. Tip ruled out 17 immediately on grounds of age, criminality and Englishness. Of the five that remained, four hung up when they heard the position was unpaid. The fifth was a musician from Dublin. His accent was thicker than tar. I could do with the headspace. The payphone swallowed another 20 pence on him. Do you know what I mean? Tip knew exactly what he meant. The place is yours, he said. The musician arrived at the weekend with a hold all over his shoulder and a guitar case in one hand. The other one he extended in a handshake that was too solid to be sincere, his dark eyes holding Tip's gaze for longer than was necessary. Thahi was his name, and he was idling around the 30 mark with a matted brown hair and the makings of a ginger beard. He wore a hoop in one ear and a scrap of black silk knotted around his throat, an affectation that left itself dangerously open to interpretation. But he had the strut of a man who wouldn't take any lip. They agreed if there was trouble, he was to phone Tip. And if there wasn't, he was to leave him alone.